This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. The War and Peace reporters returned to my interview with Roseanne Barr, the actress, the well, one of the country's best-known comedians, starting in the late 80s. She starred in the groundbreaking number one sitcom on television, Roseanne. It was the first TV series to openly advocate for gay rights. Let's go to another groundbreaker on Roseanne. Um, this was uh, in 1994, the episode uh, in Roseanne that features one of the first lesbian kisses in primetime television. The first. The first yeah. primetime uh, kiss, uh, lesbian Very kiss. Proud of that. ABC initially planned not to air the episode, but relented when you threatened to move the series to another network. That's Why don't true. you set the scene for oh, us boy. in this I, gay bar? I mean, uh, geez, I have to go back so far to remember. All I remember is that uh, you know, Marielle and I. You Ma know, you're talking Marielle, Marielle Hemingway. Marielle Hemingway. Who is just a great actor, Ernest Hemingway's granddaughter. But she's an incredible person and uh, a great actress, and uh, she's really an activist out there today too. So I've given her a shout out. So you know, uh, you know, because of Ernest Hemingway and my love for uh, writers, especially Ernest Hemingway, it was all of that stuff combined was just a, a wonder for me to be able to kiss her. And, you know, I really looked forward to it. And she uh, is a hell of a good kisser, I just have to say that. I really do. <laughs> Let's go to the scene. Can you believe that Nancy doesn't think I'm cool enough for this place? It must have been before she saw you teaching 40 people to do the monkey. Yeah, how cool is that? Pretty damn cool. Oh. Why'd you love to dance like that? Well, actually, I studied. Really? Where? In my living room with the solid gold dancers. You know, Roseanne, we had to hang out more often. I was thinking that too, but next time, let's leave the wives at home. <laughs> you read my mind. Huh? Um, for people who are listening on radio, Marielle and Roseanne. Okay, their characters on Roseanne just kissed. Roseanne well, Barr. Well, you know, I, I felt that that show, you know, people called it the lesbian kiss show, but to me it was really a show about homophobia because, you know, my all through that episode, my character was, like, confronted with her best friend coming out and, like, had a lot of feelings about it. And it, and, and so it, it was a—it wasn't just about a kiss, you know, it was. But in another way, it was because, uh, you know, there was a huge coast-to-coast -coast celebration in gay bars all over the country. We made sure to advertise there. And because of the following of gay people to The Roseanne Show, that's also why ABC allowed it, because they were a large and vocal group that supported that happening. I mean, this is 1994. You threatened to go to another network? Yeah, I did. I was threatening all the time. Boy, I got really drunk and heady with power, just like they say. Corrupts, absolutely. Well, we're talking in New York, uh, which has just become the most populous state to uh, pass gay marriage. Uh -huh. Fantastic. And now people are getting married here in New York. Your TV show was one of the first, unless you're going to say the it first. Was the first. Your TV show was the first uh, primetime sitcom to prominently feature gay and lesbian characters. And in 1995, uh, showed a same sex wedding. ABC moved the regularly scheduled broadcast time of 8 p.m. to 9 30 Eastern time. Let's go to that show. Do you, Leon, take this scarf to be your awfully rabid husband? <laughs> to escalate, to cherish, to fax? <laughs> I do. <laughs> and do you, Scott, erratically agree to all the same stuff? I do. Then, by the power encrusted in me, I now pronounce you man and... I now pronounce you men. Amen. You may kiss the bride if there so be one. It doesn't matter. <laughs> There's the kiss. 
I was wondering if they were going to do it, and they're doing it. Yeah, look at them go at it. They are not going at it, Dan. It just happens to be two people of the same sex kissing, and there's nothing wrong with that. And there you have it, those voices. Oh, it was John Goodman and Roseanne. Um, so there you have, for those who couldn't see, two men kissing on their wedding day, uh, sealing the deal, yeah. Roseanne. It was fun to really, like, force that issue. I have to say, it was a blast. And I kept doing it for a while. So this was, was really right bad. after the lesbian, soon after yeah. the lesbian kiss. It was really fun to um, keep pushing the envelope as far as I could. I, I loved doing that. The show was aired a little later than usual? Yeah, but the subject matter, you know, like, trying to, like, really push all the boundaries, because television, you know, it gives us that great opportunity to do that, and it seems, like, so sick that it's just all about pandering instead of that, you know? How much control did you have over your show? That was named after you. The show was called Roseanne. Well, ultimately, I, I you know, took all control. But, uh, you know, I had to really fight for it, and fight I did. And, you know, I happened to be, because I guess I, I, uh, I, I, I read The Art of War, I just knew how to fight for some reason. And I had a lot, I had a smart sister who helped me figure out how to fight, too. And I won. So it, it was really what did like you win? such. I won control over my show, and it was really hard. I mean, everybody tells me I should write a whole book about that. It was very difficult. But, you know, um, I think because of the fact that uh, I had such a large audience, um, you know, I was able to do it. In your New York Magazine piece called And I Should Know, which where you detail your struggles with Hollywood, you talk about how much you respect Dave Chappelle. I totally respect Dave Chappelle for having the, you know, guts to just walk away. I mean, when they, you know, from what I've read, uh, I don't know him, but uh, from what I've read, uh, you know, he, he he knew they were trying to, you know, as a black man, make him wear the dress. And, uh, you know, he's like, no, nah, I'd rather not do a show if I have to do that. And he walked away from millions and millions of dollars. And, I mean, I didn't have the guts to do that. I, I wanted to stay there. I didn't stay there for millions and millions of dollars. But I, I felt like I was delivering a message. And then, I mean, I got real, like, I felt real like I was on a godly mission thing. That's how my emotional illness manifested, that I was going to do this on behalf of, you know, the people. And... Uh, uh, so I stayed and fought and instead of walk away. And sometimes we, I wish I had walked away. What do you think would have happened? I, I would have less wear and tear on my nervous system, and my kids would have had maybe more, a more calm childhood. So, you know, as a mom, you, you sort of have regrets for that kind of stuff that you do, you know. What about your kids? Talk about your life. You gave your first kid up for adoption. Mm -hmm. How I did. old were you? I was uh, 18. You were living in Salt Lake City? Yeah. I, it's like a really crazy story. I was actually in the state mental institution, and uh, I gave my daughter up shortly after that. Met her again when she was 18, and now she's 40, and she has a, a you know, one of my little grandsons. And we have a fantastic relationship, as I do with her uh, adoptive parents, and it's just all worked out great. How did My that other happen? kids, it all worked out great, too. How did you end up in the mental institution? Because, uh... You know, I always had a little bit of a, a couple screws loose, I guess people would say. I've always, I always uh, had a dissociative disorder. Uh, but I healed from it over the course of 14 years of big-time therapy. But, you know, I mean, everybody's kind of loony now. So I was kind of a pioneer in the mental illness thing, too. Everybody says they're bipolar. Every time you pick up a paper, all Hollywood stars are saying they're bipolar. I'm like, ah, I've been there, done that. Bipolar was like nothing. Do you think it helped you succeed? It did help me succeed. It, you know, it rocked my life in the wrong way. But it helped me succeed in the fact that I was just, you know, so compartmentalized, I kept coming. It, you know, my life was falling away. My real life was suffering and falling away, but I just kept coming because I was on that mission to deliver that message on TV, and I wouldn't let anything stop me because I didn't. That part of me only knew how to do that, and then I had other parts of me doing other things at the same time, like 
you know, like dissociative people do, like PTSD people do, like bipolar people do, and, uh, you know. So you had three kids with your first husband. Mm -hmm. um, then you have this husband on TV who is John Goodman. Yeah. What was your relationship with John like? Well, I loved him, and I still love him. And, uh, you know, I never saw anybody who could act like that. Still, I think he's like the—he's just so great. I can't even believe that I had those years with him. And a lot of times, you know, John, you know, uh, drank too much and really made me mad. So, um, you know, it was real bipolar in all, every relationship I have had in ho Hollywood has a real high and a real low. And I had to, like, navigate my way to the middle with all my relationships, including John. But uh, for what he did with me on that show, I mean, there's just—I just—you know, I'm just so honored to work with that caliber of an actor. And as a human being, that guy is fierce. He is not a phony. He, he's lived a big, hard life, and he's overcome it all, too, and he's looking better and doing better than he ever has before. I'm very proud of him.